Hello everybody, welcome back to another reading. Today we're going to take a look at the case of Summer Wells, the five-year-old girl that went missing somewhere mid-June in Tennessee. You're undoubtedly aware of this case because it's been all over the media, all over social media, all over YouTube, etc. A lot of people are looking at this and there are some interesting stories about what might have happened. Um, People tend to react to the way that the parents behave, the way they come across. There could be all sorts of reasons why somebody behaves in that way, so that doesn't necessarily indicate that there is a guilty party there, but you know, it's very odd in it, to say the least. Um, also interesting to note that the father in particular keeps saying that there was somebody who probably picked her up, like he, um, I think repeatedly said that he never thought that she was missing, that it was always going to be that she was taken by somebody, and that's also interesting to say right off the bat, I would say. And um, also interestingly, if that were true, then that would have been very obvious, I would think. The thing is, uh, there was this guy who went there and interviewed the mother uh, privately. Uh, just he had his camera on him, and he like arrived at their property, and there were all these dogs walking around, and they were barking up a storm because obviously he's new; they don't know him, etc. So that makes the dad's story of her being kidnapped a little bit less likely because if somebody were to walk up to that uh, house, and he is a stranger. Um, he's going to be noticed by the dog so they would have barked and nobody would have like not noticed that somebody had gone missing or that anybody had visited them at all so that was also very strange maybe if they actually went up to the house maybe somewhere walked off to the road and they happened to get picked up who knows either way there's a lot of questions here we don't know what happened and that's why today we're doing a tarot reading we are starting off with the crow tarot deck which is uh, this one and then for further questions, moving on to the vice versa tarot deck, which is uh, this one with the double-sided cards. So before we get started, I'll just uh, tell you that I'm an intuitive reader. That means that I'll tell you what the cards say to me. Any impressions that I get while I'm looking at the cards, I'll tell you those as well. Um, that might mean that I might not always uh, explain a certain card in the way that a book would explain a certain card, but that's just because it's part of the story that we'll have here on the table. Um, I'm just going to start shuffling the cards as soon as I have a whole bunch of cards here. We're going to stop and take a look, so let's get started. Okay, let's get started over here. We've got the Three of Cups and the Two of Wands in reverse and next to Justice over here. That's an interesting combination. I'd expect Justice to be reversed in this case, but let's take a look at these two. So when I saw these two together, there, um, the first thing that came to mind was collusion. People working together, like the uh, Three of Cups in reverse, I normally see that as a disruption of harmony, and it looks like these two people came together to cause this, and so they were up to no good. They may have been conspiring against a third party together, because you see here three birds, and then suddenly there's just a two, so they may have been planning something. Um, we see here Justice, like I said, upright, next to the Five of Pentacles in reverse, so... I'm not sure what Justice Upright is trying to tell us here. Normally Justice Upright is like fair balance, a fair play, uh, you got nothing to hide. Um, but I don't know why this would show up in this way, because that would almost mean like there was something going on and it was above board. That would be what this card is saying. Uh, where are the other two here? So we got these two over here looking like they're colluding with somebody. And then we got Justice upright next to the Five of Pentacles in reverse. Now the Five of Pentacles normally like a, a card of, wouldn't necessarily say loss, but more like uh, loss of resources, less resources, bad financial decisions, 
maybe this might even mean like the abduction thing uh, that the father mentioned may have been planned or something. I might be taking quite a leap there here, but we do see here the Six of Swords also in reverse. Hmm. Because Six of Swords in reverse is like, uh, normally Six of Swords upright is letting the universe guide you. And in reverse, I'm reading this as being taken somewhere against your will, almost. So it's like, this almost seems like a transaction of sorts, if you know what I mean. Like, the, the one person over here that's missing from this card appears to have been whisked away at somebody else's uh, benefit, is what it almost seems like. Still not sure why Justice is upright, because that doesn't seem just at all, but maybe in a twisted way it was perhaps better for her that she leave that place. I don't know, but we don't know too much about that, why that would be. Temperance is also reversed because this is definitely an upheaval, the balance is gone, need to find a new balance. So I feel like on the second row we're getting one of the main players because we start off with the King of Swords in reverse next to the Page of Cups in reverse and the Moon in reverse. Now, when I saw these three together... There they are. What I thought initially when I saw this was they're definitely hiding a lot, but they're also hiding a lot of emotions, not allowed to talk about it, need to be quiet because this aura is of course the communication deck or suit and they will say whatever it is that they need to say in order to get to the place that they need to go. So the Page of Cups in Reverse says to me that it was not an unexpected emotional surprise and the Moon in Reverse says we're going to hide this. We knew this was coming, I definitely foresaw this, I may have also made some arrangement, I don't know, because in verse the King of Swords does not exactly look out for everybody's well-being, and in this case it was expected that there was going to be a loss of some sort, or a surprise of some sort, it was going to be negative, we knew this, and now we're not going to talk about it like that. That's what this seems to be saying. And then we get the Seven of Pentacles and the Six of Cups right next to each other with the Sun Reverse and the Knight of Swords. Okay, so grabbing these two real quick. So we already seen something that looks like a loss, somebody being whisked away. And over here we have the Seven of Pentacles. It's a bird sitting in a nest with a whole bunch of pentacles surrounding it, or at least underneath and one above. And with the Six of Cups here, I don't know, I just get this impression that this is something that is not new for them. It's something that uh, perhaps has been a part of their life before, like maybe this has happened before in the area and nobody actually noticed. It almost struck me when I saw it as I've got a whole bunch in the nest here and I'm going to uh, strategically apply them whenever necessary, that type of thing. And that is something that they know from the past. Like this is apparently something that they um, have dealt with in the past, have some familiarity with. And then we get the Sun Reverse and the Knight of Swords as well. Now the Knight energy normally is a little bit more mature, but the Knight of Swords is somebody who really like uh, charges off into uh, the storm, Eye of the Storm perhaps. Uh, a lot of energy there, talking up storm as well, and the Sun is in reverse, so maybe this almost strikes me as the Sun in reverse is uh, the light leaving the family perhaps, also the person who represents the Sun going into a dark period. And then we have the Knight of Swords over here trying to talk it all together, like uh, trying to tape everything back together, like this is normal, this is good, this is fine, they're gonna be okay, don't worry about it. I have thought about all this stuff before when I was still in my King energy over here, and uh, it's, it's okay, like that type of thing. But they can't really talk the sun back up from behind the horizon, so it's quite a tall tale that they're telling and quite a tall order as well. He's also trying to influence these other little birds here. If you look at that, there's like one in the back here, sitting on the back of the horse. There's one also there flying above the sword, almost like they're trying to track him, keep 
uh, up with him, trying to maybe wanting to believe what he has to say, because he looks very confident and really knows like he thinks at least that he knows where he's going, because he's charging forward. But that doesn't always mean that they're right. So I'm getting that energy of somebody like talking a mile a minute so they, they can explain their side of the story without actually giving any thoughts to other people around him, what they might be thinking or feeling. Because notably the suit of the swords is not really about feelings, it's all about facts, uh, figures, words, um, thoughts, basically. The cold mind. So this really looks as though it's pointing towards being a plan. That's something that they figured out, uh, weigh their options perhaps. That's why Justice is here because of the scales, like, okay, we weigh the pros, we weigh the cons, and uh, we're making this decision. It might not be the best decision, at least for at least one person here, but ultimately uh, we're okay with it because we're gonna hide the entire thing and we've got more stuff in the nest, so we don't need to worry too much about that. So that's kind of how it's, coming across to me right now let's ask some questions about the moon and the seven of pentacles like what's going on here is my initial reaction correct is that really what they're going for or what the terror is trying to say let's see what we can find on that Oh, lots of cards. Okay, we got three cards here. We got the Four of Cups in reverse. Uh, Four of Cups is normally like not really wanting to make a choice. It's kind of like letting go of options as well, discarding options that are on your table. And it looks to me like this is something uh, that they've been doing for some time or is kind of their standard way of living because you can see them just sitting there propped up against a tree. They are kind of looking at the options that they once had, but they're not really taking any action. They're just kind of like sitting there, not even really lamenting. It's more like, yeah, that's that's how it is. And on the other side of the card, you see the same cups, but you also see this boat here in the distance. Just notice that as well, like, okay, there might be no more options here, but there's always options in the future. But because we're getting this side of the card, it's like we're not looking at that at all. So this is basically a card saying, uh, we believe that this is how things should be because we don't have any other options, even though there are options that they're just not willing to look at. So that's that. Then we have the Ace of Swords right here with the bird flying away in the sky, lots of mountains in the background as well. So I feel like this is them convincing themselves as well that this is their uh, the right decision to make because we see here an eagle with a wreath, I think that is. It could also be one of those crowns they put on like a Julius Caesar type head to uh, indicate that they're the victor, but it could also just be a wreath. Now, either way, either way, it does symbol that or symbolize that somebody is flying far away because there's a quite a large mountain range there in the background, and we know that eagles tend to fly far, or at least can fly very far because of their huge wingspan, and uh, we are uh, cheering them on in the bottom here with the sword. Like, yes, this is what we needed to do. This is the the best idea we've had for a while. We should definitely go ahead and do this. I also always like to look at the other side and you can see the other side is much sunnier and this is almost like this is the starting point. Like you see the mountains and the uh, forest over there. They live in a very foresty area and then leaving that you see the mountains on the other side. So it's really a leaving card because we decided that that is the best course of action. And once again, look who's back. Oop, I threw him on the ground, or on the table rather. He came back for round two. This is once again the Knight of Swords. And this time he's in reverse. So this is once again the manipulation coming up from the sword suit. Uh, still charging ahead, still talking up a storm. And in this case, it's more like before he was trying to convince people that are already on his side or on their side and now it's the opposite like we're looking at the other side they're trying to convince other people that may not believe the official version so that they will actually uh, give them another version to chew on 
that they'll hopefully buy. It seems like he's gone so far out of his way to talk that he's actually flying because there's no more earth here in this card right here. It's just all clouds and they're also very dark and tumultuous. So I think he is in over his head or they are in over the head depending on who this person represents or who this card represents. So they're no longer in reality with their words or thoughts. They are out there trying to convince uh, anybody who will listen of their side in the story. And they're not going to come down back to Earth anytime soon. Let's see if we can find anything about Summer herself. Like how is she doing? Anything at all? So Summer is represented currently by this Knight of Pentacles who is looking across what looks like a desolate wasteland. This kind of strikes me as somebody who had potential but not much to work with. That is what I'm getting over here. Like, don't know how they're doing currently but as you can see there's quite the wasteland back there and they all look kind of forlorn and they're just not really sure what to do with this if they can do anything with it at all. So the, normally the Knight of Pentacles is very hard working, but you do need to have something to work with. There are certain limits to uh, self-reliance and being able to work your way out of a situation. If there's absolutely nothing there, then after a while you're just done, you can't do anything. So this almost seems to represent that the options are drying out for her, or at least have dried out for her. They do have a little store though. I'm looking at the card again and look what's back here. He's actually got a little bit of wheat over there and it looks as though there's some herbs in the hair of the horse. See that? Like there's some uh, stores here that they may have like uh, something to bounce back on maybe at least keep going and of course obviously there's this gigantic pentacle right here which is uh, representing I guess the intrinsic monetary value or value that they have within themselves so if they're still out there then they have very little uh, to go on but they have something to go on for the time being because they are resourceful in and of themselves and maybe that'll keep them upright for the time being but it does look like a very desolate card that says uh, nothing much that can be done here I can't do anything even though I am the knight that tends to be prepared for just about anything uh, even I can't do anything with this that's what it seems to say and we've got here the seven of swords so that's like a deception as well uh, being whisked away and it's at the cover of knights. And what's interesting about this card, I have to just turn around to look at it for a second, but normally the Seven of Swords is somebody stealing swords, like trying to skulk away before anybody can find them. But as you can see here, there are two guards just standing around and they're not paying any attention. And trust me, if you walk around in this hood-like thing in an encampment at night, they're gonna notice you particularly guards that are just set up all around the perimeter to keep an eye on the wasteland. So it's almost like whatever he thought he was stealing, it was allowed. They were allowed to walk off with that. He is leaving two swords behind, but yeah, uh, it doesn't, it's not like he's in a hurry to uh, collect those either. He got what he wanted and then he decided to leave and it looks as though the guards were not even going to try to stop him because they're obviously there on guard and they're not stopping him at all. It could also mean fake guardianship, like uh, they may have just been suits of armor propped up around the edge of the camp to make it look like they're guarding over something. Like this might represent um, people pretending that they were doing everything that they should have to prevent this from happening, but ultimately uh, they just let it happen regardless. Okay, so let's see if we can find anything else real quick. Any other last cards we need to take a look at in regards to the case of Summer Wells? 
Hmm? Two of Swords. Now, uh, just like the Two of Wands earlier, this is more of a, uh, a mind card. The Two of Wands earlier was more of an action card, like they decided to take action together. And in this case, it looks as though they're unwilling to change their mind about the things that they've done and the actions that they decided to take. And each sword has its own color that represents the other person. So it's almost like they are still a unified front. Regardless of all the storms that are pelting them right now, they're going to keep their eyes closed and stick to their story, is what this card is trying to say. That one goes there. I feel like we want to get one more card on the case of Summer Wells. Will we uh, see anything about her in the future? Will we get anything like more information? Here we see the Ten of Swords in any case. So right now it's very dark. Uh, there's like uh, no way out. On the other side of the card we do see this guy who's just kind of looking at him. And that almost seems like this is not an actual person once again the suit of armor may have been empty and somebody's been stabbing it with swords and actually he was the one who was wearing it before so it's almost like um even though it looks as though terrible things have happened from a certain perspective on the other side you can see that it's only an illusion like what we see here is not what it needs, seems to be initially because the person that you think is being stabbed to death is actually just sitting there calmly on a rock. So there might be more interesting uh, facts coming out about this whole story that we have not seen or foreseen. Gonna get a final card for Summer. There we go. I was just about to ask a question and we get a Hermit. So the Hermit here has a face in the moon right there that's looking down on him so this is somebody who is lighting the way trying to find his way around maybe also trying to find summer uh, normally i would say that it represents one person in particular like a detective maybe who was really uh on the case it could also mean a group of detectives of people that are currently trying to dig their way through this mess trying to figure out what's going on and i feel that they are at the very least going to come to some conclusion that they're going to light the way for everybody else to find what it is that we're looking for hopefully somewhere hopefully alive but the fact that her face is in the moon like that kind of comes across to me as um we won't be finding her physically at least not for the time being if we do find something physically it probably won't be uh, a living being anymore it almost kind of seems like that but uh, he is lighting the way uh, working away in the background. Hopefully, I guess he's staying away or they are staying away from the media, etc. Staying away from that circus so as not to be influenced by it. Calmly focusing on their own little investigation and holding up the torch to finally find where somewhere else has gone. What happened to her? We also see the mountains in the background again. A lot of mountains in these cards. So I feel like they are focusing on a very large area obviously the area that she lived in Tennessee was a very large wide open area and even though it is a huge area they are so precise in their uh, investigations in their line of thinking that they will be able to cut through most of the nonsense that does not belong in the investigation and find their way to the truth ultimately so that is what I'm seeing for Summer Wells, I'll put it over here so you can still see him. Uh, we almost seem to see here that she did not just disappear spontaneously. There was some type of plan in action by whom I don't know. It looks like at least two people were involved. And afterwards we see a lot of talking about why this was a good idea and why this is still a good idea. And Knight over here again and the Ace of Swords as well. Two is swords, a lot of swords energy, more swords over here, more swords over there, there are some swords, swords everywhere. So this is a very mentally heavy case. There's a lot of thought, there's a lot of words, but not a lot of cups, not a lot of emotions, which also kind of reflects how people tend to see the parents, but that might have other reasons. Like I said at the beginning, maybe they just have some type of um, sedatives that they use or there's something going on. Um, 
like with mental disorders perhaps, I don't know, uh, a previous mental history or uh, physical history, health issues, no idea, but it does have a lot of swords energy, this reading, so there's a lot of thought, a lot of words, not a lot of emotions. So that is what I'm seeing for the Summer Wales case. Hope you found it interesting. Uh, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below. Leave a like, that really helps the channel along. I will see you in another reading in any case. Thanks for watching and bye bye for now.